Anyway, so ladies and gents, I really wanted us to have, you know, a really good conversation about being a black entrepreneur in Canada because it can be challenging from an entrepreneurial standpoint. And I'm interested to know when you first jumped into this entrepreneurial realm, how you felt as a black person, especially when you started going to networking events and such. So um, I think we can start with, you can introduce yourself and then jump into answering. Yeah, uh, Sandra. Hello, Sandra Dawes here from Embrace Your Destiny. And I'd like to introduce myself as a recovering control freak and excuse maker. And um, so for me, I think that um, entrepreneurship felt like the right way to move from my job, my full-time job, just because I feel like, you know, growing up as a child of immigrant parents, you're constantly told that you have to be, you know, at least 10 times better than your white counterpart. And so you're always, so now you've be, been programmed to be an overachiever, right? And so then you get into your first job and because you're black, the expectation, un unfortunately, a lot of times the bar is very low. So you're constantly over delivering mm -hmm. on stuff and everybody thinks that you're the best thing since sliced bread, but the promotions and the salary increases don't necessarily come in line with that. And so I feel like for a lot of us who decide, who start off, you know, graduating from school and going and working corporate, you get exhausted and feel like if you're gonna bust your ass doing these kinds of things, then you might as well be doing it for yourself because you're not getting the reward or the, um, whether that's just saying, hey, good job or financial reward, like that's not coming. So you might as well do it on your own. And so I think that's where my entrepreneurial journey started anyway, was just thinking that if I'm, struggling like this, then I might as well be struggling for myself instead of working for somebody else. True indeed. Um, Kamshuka, how about you? Hi, everyone. My name is Kamshuka. And for having me. And so looking forward to having this conversation and just, you know, I, I, it's interesting, just the, the topic itself. Like Sandra said, we are raised to be better and better than better. You know, my father, if you want to be here, you know, really you should aim right here. And it just never seemed like it could, could get better than better. Um, the one thing that I always grew up with being a child, of an immigrant and um, my parents did a lot of traveling and before moving to Canada we lived in the Middle East and so I always knew the, the the request of my life would have to be greater I always knew this this is how we were um, but being an entrepreneur has been something that has been embedded in in my spirit um, I remember grade four uh, creating and making these scrunchies and selling them to the girls in school. And um, just the thought of being able to, you know, make my own money on my own time uh, was fascinating to me. But of course, as a, um, it is a thing. And I think we all know this. And uh, But being an entrepreneur has been a journey that has been fulfilling even though there are nights that you know we have sleepless nights there are seasons right as being an entrepreneur but um it's been an interest and um even through years of my life where i worked for other people but also you know had that side business i can tell you that it is all about proving and having your clients and your audience learn to trust you. So I, um, I'm i thankful to be Thank on this journey. You. And Thank all you. Thank you. Trevor, I'm glad you're back. Um, we're just talking about what that first- Hello. <laughs> what, what, what 
dive into the whole entrepreneurial realm? What's that first uh, inclination? Well, you know, I mean, like a lot of people on in Canada, I'm a first generation. My parents came here from the West Indies. So, you know, they wanted to build a better life for themselves and their family. And so they came to this country with really nothing. And so they worked hard to entrepreneurs in that sense that they had their own businesses, but they worked for other people and they made their money and they were able to raise their family. I sort of got that itch as well from a long time ago where I just wanted always to do something for myself. Uh, I was been single, I'd hustle. So happens that, you know, there was came a point in my life after my around three years ago, no, four years now, um, my corporate career that come to an end. And I'm just like, hey, you know what? And this is this jump into this whole entrepreneurial of course doing you kind of know our you know our story yeah at songbird so my wife had started her, her marketing and pr company when i just figured you know what it's better for us to build something for our family and, and build a legacy for ourselves and do it together we need to just continue to go find corporate jobs and do it. that was kind of how we came to that for me, I was always kind of, you know, just wanting to do stuff for myself because I really don't, I, I'm, I'm a lazy I'm an entrepreneur who wants only 10 hours. People working for him and all those other things, but this is a hard to, to do what it is that we do and, and, and maintain that, that, uh, that consistency. It, it's it's what we do to, to build a legacy for our family at this point. just but just just hustling and getting that to to build our business so we all kind of became entrepreneurs out of indeed because we didn't really want to deal with the nine to five sure, right <laughs> i think that's part of it and you know sandra you hit the nail on the head where it's like you know the compensation you know, does not equal the amount of effort that we we're putting Yes, we can hear you. Um, that the compensation was not equating the effort that we were putting in. So Great. I'm gonna talk about yes. those moments as an entrepreneur where you're at events and you're talking about you and your business and all the stuff that you do. And when you get those good for you, <laughs> is that really your business or when I can say personally, the first networking event I went to, I walked into a room and there were probably one or two other black people in the room. And it was probably a hundred people in the room. Right. And, you know, we always have to have our armor on and we're ready to conquer the world because we don't care no matter what. Like you said, right. ago, we got to go all the way up here. <laughs> right. We have to be ready to give this much. So, you know, how does it feel navigating that world as a black person? I, for me, I feel like, um, because when I first started networking, I was- Is that a question for everybody? A lot of times the only black person in the room, right? But um, I chose to leverage that because you're not gonna forget me. <laughs> Right. If I'm at a networking event and we talk, you're going to remember me because I was the only black girl there. So I, I choose to use that to my advantage as opposed to being like, hey, where are the rest of my people? Because I know that they will come mm -hmm. if the event, if that group is the right group and it's thriving, that it'll attract the right people. And so the divide that hopefully the diversity will come. But um, in the meantime, just using that uh, to my advantage. Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, that's the same thought. It's like, you're going to remember who I am. Even yes. if the description is going to be the black girl, you're going right. to remember. <laughs> you not, might not be my name, but yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Kamshuka? <laughs> I don't know if she can hear us. It was interesting years ago it's now been about entrepreneur and 
Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. It's been about 18 years as an entrepreneur. And I remember when I first started, it was interesting because, again, I was the only black girl in the room. And uh, I decided that I was going to take um, entrepreneurship and really work on my branding. So you don't see me. Me and focused on that than my person. It's my, you know, because there are moments where I was at networking events and I would have to sell myself, you know, prove myself who I am. And that could get tiring if that's all you lean on. So I focused on building brand where people would see the name Kamshika and they would just remember, you know, they may be curious, uh, even if they know how to pronounce it, they would just wonder what is this, uh, this name. And so I focused a lot of, uh, on the branding as well. So being, being, you know, in the room when I wasn't in the room. Yes, that can be key too. being in the room when you're not in the room. I like yeah. that. Uh, Trevor, yes. I think you might have a little delay. So Trevor, uh, yeah, tell us about your networking experience being, especially the black guy in the room, because a lot of times you'll find black females, but you probably won't find a black guy in the room. Let's see if Trevor can hear us. If there's a delay. Types you have to, uh, and being 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 my only allowed move had a problem with that per se the whole thing in business and everything that lightly for me is and this is always in the back of your mind as, as, as a business person just in general are you getting because you know you're trying to especially these days be nice to the black person or do you yeah. actually think I'm good enough for the job right and that was always something that sits in, in the back of my mind and I mean I grew up in the age of uh, affirmative actions so I mean you know you think in the back of your mind whether or not they're just trying to make a quota when they're hiring you or business with you trying to with, with black businesses so that's why that's why we're with it. i on just uh, but also at the same time i don't want that to because job because yeah that that's true you know even with the whole affirmative action or we know when corporations or when other companies want to meet a quota i have always just said you know you might hire me or you might sign me on to the job because i'm black but you're going to keep me because i'm good Right. You're just Absolutely. going to have to know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, we know what we're capable of. We know all the struggles we've had to go through in order to get to you, the person or the organization who we want to partner with. So, yeah, that's that really for my thoughts with that. I feel like I'm the one like driving this. Any, any questions from anyone in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> um, did I, I just have a 
random question. Because I know for me, when we started Canadian Small Business Women, a part of me felt, and sometimes I, well, okay, I felt then, and now there's a different reason why I feel that way now, a little bit of an imposter syndrome. Like I did not belong in these spaces. Then I felt that way because I know that I was still learning about the whole entrepreneurial journey. Now I feel that way because I have chemo brain and I forgot a lot of things. So they're like, you know, I'll be saying the ABCs and it's like, what's that letter, next letter supposed to be? That's how I feel with certain processes. So that's why I feel the way I feel now, but that's a different story. But do you feel like you have to, do you feel like you're an imposter in some spaces still, especially like Kamshuka, you've been in business for 18 years. Do you still feel that way? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, this is something that never goes away, but you have to keep hanging around. You know, in the very beginning, there's a lot of self-doubt. Can I do this? Not capable of doing this. And then as you realize that you need, you are everything that this this uh, this thing um, needs of you, you start to realize that what it takes. I feel every now and then, and uh, a lot of self, a lot of uh, re myself happens, and a lot of uh, the question I ask myself is, you know, they may, but do I believe in what I do and who I am? Right. Wow. Yeah. Well said, <laughs> Sandra. You know, I, um, yeah, the imposter syndrome, it's not going anywhere. It just takes different forms, right? As you evolve, that imposter syndrome just evolves with you. And so I think that sometimes what works for me is, especially with whether it's my questioning my writing abilities or my speaking abilities is for my speaking abilities, for example, I'll go back to a YouTube video I did 10 years ago and watch that and be like, oh my God, because it's so, you can tell that I was very awkward and not comfortable in front of the camera. And then I look back to videos I did last year and it's like, okay, you're seeing growth there. So there, you know, things are happening. You might not feel like it's happening, but when you compare yourself to where you were five years ago, 10 years ago, you do see that growth. And I think that's um, what gives me comfort when I'm doubting myself. Yeah. yeah, it is good to have that those points of progression that you can look back at. That is very absolutely. Yeah. But I never listen to anything that I record. Uh, Maybe I should start. Probably not going to start. <laughs> <laughs> the next time you're doing a speaking engagement and you're having some doubts, you should start. oh no, I don't even. I once I'm done, I'm done because. <laughs> Here's my philosophy on things. And I think it's just how I was raised because my motto from my prep school in Jamaica is only the best is good enough. And if right. I do something and I know I gave it 100%, I can't improve that. At right. that point, that was my 100%. So yes. if I don't like it, I just got to live with it because that's all I could give. <laughs> right, at that time, but you can always improve. Yeah, right. Sure. Look at it because then I'll go, Oh my gosh, Doinya. You know, I don't I don't want to do that. I'd be like, that was yeah. what was perfect for me then. I'm not gonna look yeah. at it again. I'll just move forward and hope that it's better. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's not, oh well. Right. Um, Trevor, you have an imposter want. syndrome sometimes. <laughs> Let's see if you hear me. Um, you know, from time to time, mind if I'm actually good enough to do one of the, do something, but I'm not sure if it's just an imposter thing or it's just more of a questioning my own ability. I'm, I'm the type of person who's like, I believe I belong in every room that I'm in and at every table. 
um, and there's nobody who could push me out of that. They can try, but you know, for damn sure, I'm going to make sure I'm going to uh, do what I can to stay at that table. Um, I mean, the the whole the whole concept of the imposter syndrome means that you really don't believe in 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 your in yourself at times, and that happens. To I don't, I don't know if uh, regular it happens it happens from time to time. My takeaway is I'm going to find my inner Trevor. I belong <laughs> in every room and at every table, so we all yes. need to feel that way. Because Amen. there are times where we doubt that we belong, but yeah. we shouldn't doubt it because we are there for a reason. You might not see the reason at that point, but we belong. I yes. see Sasha asked, what's our superpower? True. You know, for me, my superpower is my authenticity. What you see is what you get. You can like it, you can not like it. I'm fine with it <laughs> either way, <laughs> but that's my superpower. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what's yours, Sam? <laughs> I would say, and I think that I'm gonna borrow this from you because you tell me this, that it's my storytelling ability. Sandra tells a mean story. Like if I'm on the phone with her, I find myself leaning forward and I'm like, girl, you're on the phone. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, it's about to be good. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, she has a really good storytelling ability. I know what I feel Kamshuka's superpower is, but I want to hear what she says. <laughs> Why don't you know? I think you know. I feel like you have the power My to make people feel at ease. Like you're so good. Yes. I was, yeah. I was just going to say my ability to bring calmness to a storm. So. Yeah, it's the truth. You hit it right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely the truth. Uh, Trevor, what's your I mean, superpower? I know there's a delay for Trevor, so I'm just going to pause. It's a dramatic pause. <laughs> Okay, so I think I'll, I'll, definitely I'll, having issues with this connection to that question because my particular super yeah pain from my is the ability to to people and get on the same page quickly and, and they can understand they're going. Um, I want you. Their experience come out at the end of the day. To another human being, so the same, they have the same issues that you can talk and talk to them. You're a better able to, to create relationships and, and and be able to to uh, get people to to work with you and to to help you help you find a way the way past whatever awesome. whatever obstacles awesome. you have. Oh wow, guys, we've been talking for almost half an hour already. I can't believe it, guys and gals, <laughs> I should say. Um, but I want to give you all a chance to give us some parting words, you know, about your overall feeling of going forward being black entrepreneurs in Canada. Um, I know personally, I see that there is a rise in entrepreneurship period, but there's also black entrepreneurs and with all of the programs and funding that's coming down from the government, I feel like it's also going to help a lot more people who've been in that limbo moment, trying to figure out where to get resources, where to get funding, what to do. But now that there's some more support out there and now that a lot of people are buying black more and realizing the impact of buying black, I think it will definitely help 
going forward. And it also helps if we go in like Trevor, we belong here. <laughs> uh, Sandra. Um, I think that it's about finding a way to leverage what you perceive as your weakness and find a way to make it your strength. Yeah. Definitely, especially now Black History Month, everybody wants us everywhere, say yes, yes to everything. Absolutely. And also call them back in March and April and May and June and July to let them know we are still here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can you <go? laughs> That's right. Um, I have to say, being Black is also our superpower. <laughs> and um, I believe in the power of the village. So connect, uh, building the tribe, um, even if we don't speak all the time or never, it's, it, it's great comfort to know we are on the same level. Emotionally, mentally, we are here together. And that is very powerful. So the power of village. Okay, we have a village, everyone. <laughs> We need to use the power of the village. Uh, Trevor, I'm going to give you the final word. Let's pause for the dramatics. All right, so the last word goes to would be on um, your mm -hmm. is no easy task you are taking up a job that is both special and also never-ending you're going to be uncomfortable and you're just going to have to get over that because that's, that's what we do it's, that's that's how you get it Perfect. So everyone, it is three o'clock on the nose. And I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being a part of this discussion and just being able to talk because, you know, with some of you, I haven't seen in a minute. <laughs> you know, I see you on the I don't see you, you know. <laughs> so thank you very, very much for being a part of today. And we still have one other session coming up at 315, then another panel. And then we have our mixologist and our chef. I'm like ready. <laughs> so um, thank you all so much. And please stick around and network and enjoy the rest of the day. For sure. Thank you.